My name is Andrew Yang. I was born and raised in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm the second oldest of seven children. We have six boys and one girl. Up until I was 16, I was on a very different path in my life. I was very much happy being an intellectual. I was a straight A student and I wanted to go to UC Berkeley. I, I wanted to do creative writing and I got early acceptance to the school. And um, then my parents split up and my dad took me out of school and moved our whole family to Taiwan. It was a huge struggle for me in terms of, you know, really kind of calling into question who I was at a very young age. Who was I when my identity as a student was taken away from me and when things were so uncertain and my parents ended up getting back together and I had a hard time accepting that. I, I said, you know, I was angry at them for kind of mucking my life up for a year and, and kind of potentially messing everything up. And I had kind of probably the closest thing I'll have to a nervous breakdown in my life. And I, I cut off all my hair with scissors and then woke up the next day feeling totally calm and saying, you know what? They can control where I am. They can control where I go to school, but they can't control me. They can't control what makes me happy. And I realized that I could control that. And I was in charge of that. And then the minute I took charge of it, everything changed. I got a job teaching English, talked to the the school administrator at the private school where I went to and he agreed to take me and my brother and my sister back tuition free and it was an offer my dad couldn't turn down and so we moved back to the States and it was in Taiwan that I started making dresses for friends for fun and started to really fall in love with fashion. When I was 18 I moved to New York and went to the Fashion Institute of Technology and I studied fashion design and later specialized in knitwear. While I was in school I interned for some really amazing companies and I got to experience the fashion industry very very early on. I think I realized intellectually that fashion wasn't going to solve all my creative needs. I, I wanted to make something with my hands again. I was tired of designing clothes on a computer. I wanted to sew, I wanted to cut, I wanted to build. So I made my first doll in 2008. I created this thing that had some of my own life force in it and it, it came alive and had a will of her own. And one thing led to another and a fashion photographer contacted me and he said hey I know someone at Vogue and um, would you want to bring your dolls in so I brought my dolls into the Vogue offices not really expecting anything or knowing what was going to come from it you know fashion people talk so the the editor Elisa she she loved the work she loved the dolls and she said hey I want to do something all I have to do is get approval from Anna so she she called up Anna's office and she brought the dolls in and when she came out she had this stunned look on her face and I was so worried I said oh my gosh she hated them she loved them she said hey can you make 200 for fashions night out in September and everything kind of swelled up into this big point and in, in one year I went from scrounging to get by to traveling the world and going to every store in fashion week since joining forces with Christina and Archetypes and kind of merging my, my business professionally, I'm getting the opportunity to, to bring the dolls to life as characters through a variety of medium, whether it be TV, digital, publishing, um, getting to test out all these really exciting opportunities and see where they fit best and, and where the vision can go. I think whatever creative really wants to do is put a little bit of themselves into the work that they're doing, whether it's a song or a painting. And I've always put a little bit of myself in, in the dolls. And maybe because they have eyes and they have a face, it's a little bit easier to see the soul that carries through.